Carolyn Doobie here. So you've heard about the jelly plate, but you kind of wonder, how do you get started in it? What's involved? Well, that's what this video is here to help you with. What size jelly plate should you get? What about the brayer? What kind of paper should you use? Now, you may or may not have seen some videos on how to use a jelly plate. You may have seen prints that people have created from something that, oh, and that's upside down, something that looks very realistic or to something that's just a more complex pattern to using stencils or just getting some rich layers of color without having to spend all those hours putting the layers together because using a jelly plate, creating layers of colors and getting that look is actually really quick and easy. But where do you start? They have so many different sizes of jelly plates. Which one is best for you? Well, Jelly Arts has a 12 by 14 jelly plate and it's giant. Is that the right plate for you? Well, if you like to make things the size of ATCs, I don't know if this size jelly plate may be the best thing for you. But if you like to work a little bit bigger, then it might be just what you But need. let's say you are a person that really likes to do those ATCs. Do they make smaller ones? Absolutely, they've got this adorable little three by five one. You can use what that. What about somewhere in the middle? I don't wanna do giant and I don't wanna do teeny. What do I need? That might be the eight by 10. And I will tell you that this is the workhorse of my jelly plates. It is the one that I use more than any other. It's kind of my in-between. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right. But what if you want a shape besides a rectangle or a square? What about round jelly plates? They've got them. They have them in three different sizes from the four inch to the six inch to the eight inch. And I gotta tell you, I like them all. So what it comes down to, if there's one that's best for you, is which size are you most drawn to? When you saw these, which one really grabbed your attention? Did you immediately think, oh, that little one, or oh, I want the big one? Whichever one spoke to you the most, that's probably the best one for you to start with with the round jelly plates. Bottom line it, right? You wanna know which jelly plate is the one that's best for you. And that, I can't tell you, because it's a very personal choice. If you like working larger, then a larger jelly plate makes sense. If you like working smaller, then a smaller jelly plate makes sense. If I could only buy one jelly plate, if I was only allowed one, and by the way, that's such a scary concept to just have one, but if I was only allowed one, it would be the eight by 10. That is the one that I use more than any of the others is the eight by 10 size. That said, I don't wanna give up my four inch round one or my eight inch round one because they all behave or create slightly different looks for me. People have asked me, can you make your own gelatin plate? And the answer is yes. And they ask me, well, have you done it? And my answer is no, I have never done it. And I don't know if I ever will. Here's why I know that about me. Years and years ago, I saw some demonstration with mono printing and a gelatin plate that somebody had created, and this was long before Jelly Arts had ever even invented the jelly plate. So this is cool, I gotta do this. And I bought the gelatin, I bought everything I needed, and I never did it. 10 years that gelatin sat in the cabinet. It made it through moves with us, and finally, my kids said, this has expired a long time ago. I'm like, okay, we can get rid of it. I've never made it. I didn't want to take the time to mix up the ingredients, let it set in the fridge, have the pan the right size to create the shape that I wanted, to keep it in the fridge, all those things because usually what would happen to me is I'm like, hey, I want to do that right now. Oh, I don't have the stuff right now. And I couldn't. With the jelly plate, I can just grab it off the shelf. It is good to go anytime that I want to play. So for me, the jelly plate is the answer that makes mono printing accessible for me. Whatever answer is best for you, fantastic. Go with the answer that is most comfortable for you. So you've decided on what kind of jelly plate you wanna use, you figured out that part, but what else do you need? You're gonna need a brayer. Now you just need one. Of course I happen to have more than one because I'm a little addicted to all of this. What you're gonna need is any soft rubber brayer. It is important that it's a soft rubber brayer to spread the paint on well with the jelly plate. Now you can see I've got different sizes here. There's a six inch, a three inch, a one and a half inch, which size is best for you? Well, let's see. Well, let's say you've got a three by five jelly plate and a six inch brayer. Will they work together? The answer is yes. So you've got this big brayer and this little jelly plate, but it still will work. What might work better with that one is the three inch brayer. It fits nicely along there. And what about the one inch brayer? Yep, that'll fit on it too. 
So which of these brayers is perfect for the three by five? This comes down to, I know you're not gonna like this answer, but what's most comfortable for you? I find that if I'm using the really big jelly plate, I like using a bigger brayer. If I'm using a smaller jelly plate, I like using either the medium or the small one. These two really get interchanged for me quite a lot. I can feel the question there. If you had to buy just one, you're getting started. Which one brayer is the best one to start with? Oh, and it's hard for me to pick just one, but I would have to say the three inch brayer, something in the middle. That said, any soft rubber brayer will work with a jelly plate. So if you've got one any size, it will work with any jelly plate. So you've got a plate, you've got a brayer, next thing you need is paint. You can use any acrylic paint without any worries on the jelly plate. They're all safe and fair game. And I'm willing to bet you already have a couple of acrylic paints in your stash. I suggest starting with those. Seeing how they feel, see how you like them, how do they dry for you, all those kinds of things. Kind of just get a feel for it with those. And then you'll be able to decide if you want to buy more of those paints or if you want to try some different kinds of paints. To help address some of the issues around choosing which paint and what different ones do and how they behave on a jelly plate, I've got a separate video that goes in depth on that and I'll have the link down below for you. Okay, I can hear the question already. What's the one paint? Just tell me which one to start with. And the answer, if I had to pick one as a place to start, it would be Amsterdam. There are fluid acrylics that are really runny and it's not that. And there are heavy body paints that are really thick and it's not that. It's somewhere in the middle. It's a nice consistency for playing around on the jelly plate. And on top of it, I can get a nice big tube of it at a very good price so that I can have fun playing and I'm not worried that I basically invested large amounts of money in the paint. So that's, if I'd pick one, just one to start with, it would be Amsterdam. But keep in mind, different paints behave differently on the jelly plate, so there is lots of room for experimentation. You have a plate, you have a brayer, you have paint, now you need something to print on. What can you jelly print on? Well, you can jelly print on just about anything. It is easier for me to say what you can't use with the jelly plate as opposed to what you can use. I would stay away from really, really delicate, fragile vintage papers because, well, I've done that thinking this looks so cool and the paper is just kind of shredded and crumbled right there and I had to pick all the little pieces off the jelly plate. So I'm staying away from delicate vintage papers. The other thing, now I've not experienced this, but Jelly Arts has said coated papers that you might say use when uh, printing photos at home on an inkjet printer on that glossy stock, photo stock paper, apparently that can leave some residue on your jelly plate. I haven't experienced that, I haven't done that, but my attitude is, is I'll try just about anything on the jelly plate because if I ever ruin one side, magically it's got another side that I can use. With this attitude, I have yet to ruin a single jelly plate. Now, one thing that I do stay away from when I'm jelly printing is sharp objects. Things that might cut or tear into the surface of the jelly plate, I'm gonna stay away from those things. But everything else, fair game. Fabric, shoes, uh, my kids' old homework papers, cardstock, old scrapbooking papers, um, gosh, um, copy paper, uh, tissue paper, deli paper. I mean, you name it, you can print on it. All right, I can hear the question. What paper do you start with? My answer is whatever's within reach. Whatever kind of paper you've got easily accessible, go with that. And you may want to have a couple sheets of it because once you start printing, it's hard to stop. I love to really create a lot of prints at once because it's just fun. So after you've done that, once you get in there and play with it, you go, hey, I really like how this paper feels or I don't like this about it. Then you have an idea of where to go. It is through trial and error and practice that you start to realize, oh, I like a paper that's thinner. Or I like a paper that's thicker. I like this. I like that. But you can start with anything. And I really suggest you start with whatever's within arm's reach. So you've got all the supplies that you need for jelly printing. But what if you're still feeling a little trepidation about it? What if you're still not sure you want a little more guidance on it? I have got lots and lots and lots of YouTube videos where you are looking right over my shoulder as I'm printing and playing. And if you've seen some of those and you want some more, you want some more guidance, you want some more structure, you want some more encouragement with it, you want more in depth about how to get some of the looks that I get, well, I've got two different workshops available right now that can help you with that. One's called a Colorful Workshop Jelly Printing and one's called One Pull Wonders. Both of these workshops are self-study and what that means is the minute you get in the classroom, it's all there for you to work at your own pace. Now don't feel any pressure because you have forever access to it and on top of that, 
it's all downloadable. I've got information about these workshops over on my website at acolorfuljourney.com, and I'll have a direct link for you down below the video. Well, hopefully now you feel a little more comfortable and confident jumping in and starting with jelly printing. I know I love doing it. There is such a joy I get from making the prints and the excitement that I feel still after doing it now for several years. I'm still just as excited to do it now as I was in the beginning. It is a fantastic way to play and have fun with color. Thank you.